The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome to our match preview for our next game. It's Hull City away, the rearranged fixture that was cancelled on Boxing Day. Uh, it's back with us now on this uh, Wednesday, the 19th of January it'll be, won't it? So um, yeah, a few weeks, we've we've got it quickly. And as you can see, Dan the Man is back on the match preview after a little hiatus. You've not been with me for the last couple, Dan, but you're back. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. It is this the first one this year? I, I think, think it is your first. It, yeah, I think well, it is your if, first. I think we recorded on this field on New Year's Eve, didn't we? So I think it is the first <laughs> one this year. So uh, it's nice to be back on. It's been a bit of time off, but Alex and Tom have done a good job in my absence. So I'm looking forward to it. They have, and I've not followed whether they've um, excelled with your prediction record. I think Alex predicted us to beat Wigan. I think Tom predicted us to beat Cardiff. So I think no Tom's one's matching my record. I'm <laughs> telling you, it's some beats yeah. at the moment, but we'll see, won't we? We'll see how you get on. And Rovers fans tuning in, as we always say, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button. And please give this video a big like for us. Uh, and please obviously comment on the video as well. If Dan or I say anything tonight that uh, you disagree with, then let us know in that comments box. And a big shout out to SixYardsOut.com and Blue Rose Capital. So Dan, we'll start where we always do, and that is the previous game, and it's the one that we couldn't go to. It's the one that Rovers TV sadly didn't provide a service for everyone watching. It was that away game behind closed doors to Cardiff City. Not vintage Rovers, particularly in that second half, but I love results like this, where the team just grinds it out. You know, 10 men in the end, we, you know, we stood firm, we got the job done, 1-0 victory, moment of brilliance from Joe Rothwell, in many respects a perfect away result. So um, how did you reflect on the result? I think just like that, I've said it in the transfer talk, Bradley Johnson said one minute of magic, 90 minutes of hard work, and it was just that way, and it? We fought for it. I think we were the better side in a lot of aspects. I saw, I've seen all the pundits saying, oh, yeah, Cardiff had 11 shots and all this but it's every game this season that the other team has more of the ball more shots and we win the game it was nervous it was i felt a bit nostalgic with all the watch along and you know doing everything from home for once but i enjoyed it and i'm just i'm glad to be back tomorrow really yeah, and I think you're right about the game. Yeah, as much as Cardiff did have, did have more shots and possession, there's only two moments in that game where I was really a little bit anxious. The first was in the first half where Cody Drama actually crossed the ball and James Collins nearly got on the end of it. I was like, oh. And then obviously in the second half, the brilliant save from Thomas Kaminsky. They're the only two moments for me that I'd class as chances where Cardiff looked dangerous. All the other chances, you know, they were kind of half chances for Cardiff. You know, they didn't threaten us too much. Yes, there was the clearance off the line from Van Hecker towards the end. But, you know, that kind of happens in games which are uh, uh, games that are 1-0 going into the end. So it was great to just see us stand up and be counted in that way. And, you know, Joe Rothwell, we've been talking about him all season. This is why we need him to sign the new contract, because these are the games where if you're thinking about promotion and games are nil-nil, I think there's only two players in the Rovers' side, probably at the moment, that turn a nil-nil into a one-nil. One is Joe Rothwell, the other's probably Brereton Diaz. We do have Bradley Dack coming back as well that can probably turn a nil-nil into a one-nil. We are going to have these games where sides will make it difficult for us. They're going to be wanting to shut us down. They're going to be wary of us on the overturn. They're going to be wary of us on the counter-attack. So, in many respects, fair play to Cardiff. And actually, great respect to Rovers for finding that way to win. Yeah, we've had it a lot, haven't we? And we've talked many times during Mowbray's reign about getting frustrated and drawing 0 nil, losing 1 nil these games. And again, it's these are the reasons I'm starting to believe. And, you know, I think we're going to do it because we had the 7 nil loss, came back from that like it never happened. We've had no fans in the ground, just overcame that, won the game. We've had different players going missing at times. We lost Kaminsky for three games. A year ago, if you lose Kaminsky, I think you 
very worried, aren't you? And then Pace comes in and puts three incredible performances in. It's everything's going our way, and you know you need a bit of luck to go up. And we've had that so far. I'm just hoping it's another three points and a routine win to get us over that fifty point mark I spoke about twenty games ago. So yeah, it's good, <laughs> isn't it? It's got there a bit sooner than I thought we would, but yeah, that's yeah. it. And um, I thought going forward, it was probably the most disappointed I've been in Rovers all season, actually. But I'm not going to complain too much. We've scored lots of goals this season, particularly at home. But yeah, we were really sloppy in the final third. You know, that final pass, that final ball very wasteful, poor decision-making. And, you know, maybe against better sides, we'll get punished on that. However, you know, in many respects, it didn't matter because when the defence is standing firm in the way it did, what is it, seven clean sheets in 10? Um, yeah, it's somewhat ridiculous, isn't three it? Three goals conceded in 10 games. You know, when you can rely on that, actually, the attack can have an off day. So it was great to see us just stand firm. And, you know, Ryan Niambi was very unlucky in that game to get the red card. Perry and G did a bit of a number on him. The first one... Obviously, NG, that tackle on Lenihan was a disgrace. And Nyambi's reactions got him the book in the second. NG knew exactly what he was doing. And obviously, the consequences of that red card, we will talk about very shortly in terms of the team selection. But if we move our focus onto the Hull game, Dan, um, is this a good time to play Hull? Because when we did the preview around Boxing Day, you know, it was only about three weeks ago. But Hull did appear like they were in a little bit of form. Um they were causing some sides a few problems around them. But I saw them on Sunday against Stoke on Sky, and I did think they looked really poor. And actually, the way that they play, I think, can just play into Rovers' hands a little bit. Add on the incentive for Rovers, it's a chance for us to widen the gap to seventh to 11 points, effectively 12 with the goal difference, and a little bit of pressure on Bournemouth as well with them not playing. So this is a... You know, I'm not no one's saying must win, but for me, this feels like an important game and one that we should be going to target to win, isn't it? Yeah, it's massively one that we have to look to win. I think full and play, well, we're recording this on the Tuesday, I think full and play tonight in their game, so that could even have more on to it. You know, if full and yeah, I don't want to say it because I know how good they are, but you know, if full and lose their game and then we're looking at a win to put us up there, it's I think, like you say, it's. I don't think the must-win label will come in much this year, but because every game's like that now, isn't it? Every game you're looking at when you're as good as we are, you're looking at it and thinking we should win it, we should go and win it, and we'll slip up on the way as the top two have already. And I think just keep putting points on the board, and if we finish third, we finish third. Hull away, I look at it every time, I think three points, and... It has been every time under Morby, and I do think we'll do it here, but I'm always wary of getting caught out. Yeah, you've got to be wary. And, you know, if we are actually being fairly objective around this, you know, it's not been vintage Rovers in the last three games, you know, stumbled a bit over the line against Barnsley. Um, Huddersfield, obviously, well worthy of their draw at Ewood and scraped that 1-0 against Cardiff. So it's not been vintage Rovers compared to recent weeks. So we've got to guard against that complacency. But... Yeah, just with what it could mean for Rovers and just putting that pressure on the side around us and maintaining that really healthy gap to seventh place and having seen Hull on Sunday and just the way that they play, I think, playing into our hands. This is one where I'm hoping and expecting a win, actually. So um, let's th you know, think about the side then, Dan. Main selection headache for Mr Mowbray is, of course, Ryan Nayambi um, at right wing back. Uh, he can't play. He's suspended. He's got a one-game suspension. So there are a few ways that Tony Mowbray could go with this. And you and I will just chat this through and then maybe land on what we think he will do, not necessarily what he should do. Um, so I think the obvious option would be Joe Rankin-Costello. He's been back on the bench. Um, he has played right wing back for Rovers. He is just coming back from injury. And it would be a big show of faith from Mowbray to throw him in for 90 minutes away at Hull. What's your thoughts on Joe Rankin Costello? Would you be bringing him in? Um, is he the the ideal replacement for Ryan Niambi just coming back from injury with injuries that he's really had to nurse and, and be protective against? I don't think so. I think Mowbray said it today about how he's, you know, they don't want to throw him back and then lose him for another two months. I saw him for the 23s the other week and I don't think he looked 100%. You know, I can't see him getting through 90 minutes and then when you know you're having to make a sub on your right back, and Hull will know the same, won't they? They'll know that 
he's not played for a long time if he does play and for me it's one that you don't risk yet and you save it for down the line you know Nyambe Sifalk is going to be fit in a week or two because they've had the break over in Germany you know it's we can afford to risk uh, we can afford to rest him I think given how well we've been performing and if we were eighth in the league I think he'd be back in the squad now and playing but when we are where we are, you can rest them. So if it's not Joe Rankin Costello, that's obviously going to give us other options. They Falk, who you just mentioned there, he is traveling with the squad, but he's not going to be part of it. So as you say, it's too soon for him. We have seen, uh, signed James Brown. Um, obviously, most of his time has been in the under 23s. Can you make a case for James Brown starting? Can you make a case for him being thrown in? Uh, no, I think he's got to come off the bench to play Sam. It could be. We could see JRC and then Brown, maybe if Morbe does have to make that sub. I saw him the other week again for the 23s, and I like the look of him, but you've still got to give him time. He's not had a pre-season. He's probably two months without football before now, so 70 minutes last night as well. I don't see him coming in, and I don't think it's the best option. I think as well with Hull having decent wing backs, I think it's Lewis Potter that plays out on that side. I do wonder if Mowbray would be a little bit anxious about that. So I agree. I can't see it being James Brown. So that's um, leading us into two other options then. Um, one that would have been good to have before we go on to those two would have been Hayden Carter. We did see him, I think as a way at Nottingham Forest where he did pretty well at a fullback position earlier on in the season. He has gone on loan to Portsmouth, of course, so we can't use that option. So that leaves two other options. Um, one is John Buckley. Um, Mowbray has gone in the press to say that Buckley can play anywhere and Mowbray has played him anywhere. Um, I personally don't like John Buckley at right wing back as much as I'll trust him to do the job. Uh, we need him in the centre of the park because he's so important to that midfield three that we've got. Are you throwing John Buckley into that position? No, I've spoken about it so many times about breaking that midfield free up and it a bit of worse thing we could do. So I can't go back on my word. We've, you know, we've all seen how well Buckley, Travis, and Raphael have been together, and he'll keep that, I hope, for as long as it's possible, really. So if it's neither of those people we've spoken about, um, I think I've more convinced you into this one than uh, than you going with this one. But this is the way I think Mowbray is going to go with it. Daryl Enahan at right wing back. We saw him move out to that position after Nyambi's red card on Saturday uh, and he brought Daniel Ayala into the centre of defence. For me, Dan, I think this just comes down to a trust thing. I think Tony Mowbray is ultimately going to trust Daniel Ayala more to come into the side than Joe Rankin Costello to go at right wing back. And with that, he will also trust Daryl Enihan to do a really good job at right wing back. So let's just weigh up Dara at right wing back. He's done really well as that right sided centre back, getting forward down that channel, threading those balls. He's clearly not going to be Ryan Niambi marauding down that right hand side. But, you know, that defensive wing back formation that we do play, you know, if it is Dara who's filling in there, he'll do a great job there, won't he? And actually, maybe he might just be able to release himself a little bit further down that right channel like we've seen in recent weeks. Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen Lenny on a few times as well at right wing back. I seem to remember Bristol's Rovers away in League One. He filled in and I like him there. He can deliver a ball. He did it against Millwall. You know, he can be that full back who gets up and although it's not his best position, I think we're lucky that we've got the defensive solidity now of bringing Ayala in that we can afford to move Lenny on. And if anything happens to a centre-back, Lenny on moves in, doesn't he? And JRC at right back. So you did talk me into it a bit, but given that every other option is not 90% fit or 100% fit and Buckley's John Buckley and one of the best number 10s in the league at the moment, it has to be Lenny on for me. Yeah, and as I say, it's just all centred in trust for me. It's just the way I think Mowbray is going to go. You know, he does have his favourites in the squad. He has got people who we can rely on. And for me, that's where Daniel Ayala comes in. And he, as I say, equally trusts Lenihan to go out there. The deliveries into the box, absolutely fair point. I hadn't thought about it that way either. Lenihan has got a good pass on him and a good cross as well. So that could be a bit of a tactic that he uses as well um, in the game on Wednesday. So in terms of the type of game you're expecting then, Dan... Um, you know, Hull do like possession of the ball at times, although they're not the, you know, the highest percent possession in the league. You know, they're kind of lower mid-table. 
Um, and as I say, they did look quite open against Stoke. They played a really high defensive line and DiMaggio Wright Phillips in particular was exploiting that in the first half. So this game feels like if Hull are going to play like that and come on to us a little bit and play open and with a high line, this is a real chance um, for us to exploit this with our counter-attacking game, with the pace of Kadra in behind, with the overturn of possession. Are you looking forward to the game for that reason? Yeah, it's one of them for me, like I said before, I enjoy Holloway and we're always good. And I think, like you said, we suit them. Our style will suit playing against them really well. And I'll be honest, I think we could score three or four. You know, I think... I'm not going to get ahead of myself and say we're going to smash them, but we have that quality now. And with Mark and Day coming in as well, it's just, you know, 3 0 up and he comes off bench, scores a debut goal. It's, I love a play on his debut. It feels like it's written in the stars, doesn't it? So I'm just expecting us to go and be better than them. And that's the honest truth. It might come back and bite me, but I just think we're going to be the better side and get the job done. Yeah, I was actually more nervous about this game going into it on Boxing Day than I yeah. am now. I think now I've seen us and um, and seen them, as I say, on Sunday. I just I feel that their style of play is just going to suit us a tee. And as you say, whether it's Kadro, whether it's Mark Andre coming off the bench, whether it's Gallagher, whatever, I think we've got the tools to really hurt them, particularly if they are going to play that high line. I think that would be a really dangerous tactic. We've seen it earlier on in the season as well. John Buckley will find that pass in behind if needs be. So... I think that that would be a foolish tactic from Hull if they're going to do that. Um, so let's just talk through the side then, Dan, um, that we've agreed. Uh, Daryl Lenihan at right wing back, as we can see there. This is the one we've gone for. You know, Daniel Ayala going into that central position with Van Hecker mm -hmm. shifting out to where Lenihan is. The rest of it kind of picks itself. You know, Harry Pickering is still injured. Just a little word on Teo Edun. Um, he did take a little bit of criticism on Saturday and it wasn't his most stellar performance. Um I think we're just going to need to be careful with any criticism of Edun because we really need this guy to be fit for the next four to six weeks because, you know, Pickering is out with that injury. So um, do you think it was just a bad day at the office for Edun or do you expect him to maybe just grow into that left wing back position and, you know, we see better from him going forward? I think part of it as well is he's not Harry Pickering, is he? He's not got the same abilities going forward. So we're not going to get that out of him. And although I said before, I prefer him at sentiment, I do think he's a, decent enough options have at left back he's not going to go and take three on and put him in there he's not going to whip it like Pickering but it's another option and I think when you look at both fullbacks here they're not both massively attacking fullbacks are they so it's probably going to fall we'll probably push Eden up more won't we with Lenny and being an actual centre half but I'm confident with Eden in there you know mm. he is good enough I think Eden would be the one who would push forward. And we did see it in the first half. He played a lovely little interchange, I think, with Kadra. And um, I can't remember what happened after that. I think he might have played it to Diaz and we got a shot away. But we did see some real drive from Eden. So I think if it is Lenihan in that position, or indeed if it's even JRC and Mowbray's just saying, nothing foolish, just protect yourself, the left-hand side might be the one that we try and exploit. Um as I say, the rest of the side picks itself. Just a word on Reda Kadra, though, um, and obviously the the link to Mark Ande, Dylan Mark Ande coming in. I've got no doubt that Dylan Mark Ande signing for us, there will be an agreement and expectation there around minutes. You know, this signing is a bit of a coup for us coming from Spurs, and I've got no doubt there was a whole host of clubs that wanted him. Would you be expecting that Mark Ande will be starting sooner rather than later and seeing him alongside Brereton Diaz? I think he'll start against Middlesbrough. I think he won't throw him in straight away against Hull. I think he'll come off the bench. And, you know, our, our players usually debut quite well, don't they? They come off the bench, they have a, a good 30 minutes and they're in the next week. So I'm expecting him to be in, you know. And again, we've got to go for the future, haven't we? Kadra's probably not going to play for the club next year. Mark Andy is definitely going to play for us. So I like the idea and. He's a goal scorer in the under 23s, and I just hope he can do it here. Someone who can take the pressure off Brereton's what we need this window for me. Yeah, definitely. And what I like about um, the business that we're doing as well and some of the rumoured business, I do think there's just a little bit of protection for us for if we do get a really hefty bid for Brereton Diaz. You know, if we do get some on deadline day, then Marconde, Kadra, Gallagher, Dolan, 
Butterworth, you know, we've still got attacking options there that you'd trust to to still, you know, allow us to be that effective attacking unit. So, yeah, hopefully we see Mark Hande tomorrow. I agree with you. I think it'll be from the bench. Um, but um, I'm expecting this kid to be starting sooner rather than later because I think, as I say, that'll be the expectation on his part with picking Rovers. Um, rest of the side picks itself, you know, that midfield three, that balance three that we always talk about. Brereton Diaz, bit of a quiet game for him on Saturday. Hopefully we can see him chip in with a goal or two tomorrow as well. So final thing really, Dan, is is just our predictions. You went in heavy earlier on. I've got a little insight into what your prediction is going to be. You're thinking we're going to score three or four goals. So what do you think the score is going to be? I think we're going to... I'll go for 4-1. I just, these games used to worry me and I've always got that one in the back of my head, but we've just got something different. I'm going to go 4-1, I'll go for Diaz 2, Lenny Angle from right wing back and, you know, I'll go Mike Andy off the bench. I don't think he will. I'll go Richie Smallwood for them. Just, <laughs> you know, I know what you're like with superstition and I'm, I do feel the same with players like that. So I'll go Smallwood for them. Richie, I forgot about Richie Smallwood, of course. So, uh, yeah, he'll be facing up against Rovers. Um, I'm going to be a bit more conservative because I don't think we're playing vintage football at the moment. So, I think 2-0 Rovers. I think it'll just be... It won't be one where we blitz them, but I think we absolutely will take advantage of the spaces that they're going to leave. Um, I expect them to to come at us a little bit and I'm expecting them to leave those gaps. So, 2-0 Rovers. I am going to say... Diaz to get one again and I'll say Rothwell again I think those spaces on the pitch I think he's going to exploit them and all so um, 2-0 Rothwell and Diaz so that's our predictions Dan has gone 4-1 I've gone 2-0 let us know what you think in that comments box Rovers fans what do you think of our predictions how are you feeling about the game are we absolutely barking mad putting Daryl Enihan at right wing back. You let us know what you think in those comments. It's just what we think Mowbray will do. A fully fit JRC, you absolutely put there, but I just can't see it. So I think we're going to see Dara there and, and Ayala at centre-back. But let us know what you think in that comments box. If you're going to the game, please do enjoy the game. Please give this video a like. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And a big thank you to Blue Rose Capital and Six Shards Out for their kind sponsorship. Dan, we will end it there. You enjoy the game as well, mate. And we're looking forward to seeing Mark Hande score, aren't we? Yeah, fingers crossed. There we go. That's it. So we'll see you soon, Rovers fans. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods, including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Yeah! <laughs>